central claim of the church is that Jesus is the Messiah, son of David. Another important claim of the church is that the same Jesus is born from a virgin. He's born without a biological human father. Problem, these two claims are incompatible. To be the Messiah, son of David, in other words, you're coming from the royal line, you have to have a biological human father from the line of David. You have to be the son of the son of the son of the son of David. It goes from the father's side. That's how royal lineage works in the Jewish Bible. You cannot claim to be the Messiah, son of David, and claim a virgin birth at the same time. The typical Christian response to this challenge is they start out with a joke. They would say, oh, so you believe in the virgin birth, you believe you didn't have a biological human father, but you, but you don't believe he was the Messiah. Now that's a dishonest joke. It's just a joke. It gets a Christian crowd to laugh. A Jew doesn't find this joke funny. No, we don't believe he was born from a virgin, and we don't believe he's the son of David either. What we're trying to say is that the two central claims of the church cancel each other out, are incompatible. Okay, what is the more serious response? of the church. The more serious response of the Christian scholars and missionaries would be, well, he's the son of David from his mother's side. Now, that, that claim, if we, were, if we were to take that serious, if we were to take that seriously, would render the qualification son of David to be something almost meaningless because each of us have, has two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, and if you calculate back if many generations, as many generations as it was from David, we're talking about millions. The, probably every Jew today alive has some lineage of David, either from father's mother's father's father's mother. If you count matrilineal descent, descent from the mother, then the claim being the son of David is almost meaningless. But we could prove this from the Bible itself. We could show how the Bible makes it very clear that royal lineage has to follow the father's line, biological father's line. Now, besides the fact that when we're talking about tribal lineage in the book of Numbers, the phrase, to their father's house, the families to their father's house, Numbers chapter 1 appears over 20 times, which gives us to understand that tribal lineage passes through the father. But there's an episode, a tragic episode, in the second book of Kings chapter 11. What happened was, in the, this was when the two kingdoms of Israel were divided. There was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The southern kingdom was ruled by the house of David. The northern kingdom had different dynasties ruling the northern kingdom. Now it happened that one of the kings of the house of David, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, was assassinated. He was killed. Now his mother decided if her son is not king, no one's going to be king. And the prophetic narrator, the prophet tells us in chapter 11, it says in chapter 11, verse 1, that Asalia, who was the mother of the king, arose and eradicated, exterminated, eskol zerah that's Hebrew, entirety of the seed of the kingdom. She killed out all of the seed of the kingdom. But the, prophet, the prophetic narrator tells us that the daughter of the former king hid one of the boys. So she wasn't entirely successful in killing out the royal line because the daughter of the king managed to smuggle one of the boys out from the place where they were being killed and to hide him. And that's how the line was preserved. So let's step back and absorb the story. What's happening over here? Here we have a woman who's intent on destroying the royal line. And she's trying to kill every last one of them. And this hero, heroine, this girl, comes along and smuggles the boy out. It's, from the context of the story, it's very clear that the girl was not targeted. The women were not targeted because that wasn't the seed of the kingdom. Now, you might say, well, that's what they, they were thinking. But no, the prophetic narrator tells us that she su succeeded in destroying Eskol Zerah HaMamlacha, the entire seed of the kingdom. In other words, the prophetic narrator knows that there are girls walking around, daughters of the king walking around, 
But that's not the seed of the kingdom. The seed of the kingdom has to follow the male line. And the only reason the seed of the kingdom survived that massacre was because of that one boy that survived. The fact that the female descendants of the king survived was of no consequence to the prophetic narrator. And he, he, he tells us that the seed of the kingdom was eradicated except for this one boy, even though the female descendants were there. So this makes it very clear to us that the Christian claim that you can have a Messiah son of David who is not a biological descendant of David from his father's side is unbiblical and is, non, is, is untrue.